Hello, everyone. Welcome to the garage. I'm Fast Rod. And in today's video, I'd like to have a discussion about the car brands in Fallout. Um, one interesting topic about Fallout and the vehicles in Fallout is um, the car brands. The car brands or lack of car brands. Uh, this has been a question that I've had for quite some time now. Uh, whatever happened to the different manufacturers that existed uh, in the U.S. They, uh, you know, uh, back in the 1940s and 50s when the supposed divergence uh, between our world and the Fallout universe takes place. Um, because contrary to um, what you might think, um, these, you know, car companies that existed in our real world uh, way back when, they were pretty big titans. I mean, we're not talking about small, local, you know, mom and pop style car brands. I mean, these are these are massive car brands. Um, and to pretense everything that I'm about to discuss, um, obviously, uh, it, it must be very obvious that the car, the really only known car brand of the Fallout universe, Priceless, uh, doesn't actually exist. Um, it, it's not a real car brand. Um, there is no, you know, uh, car brand named Priceless. Um, there is the Chrysler Corporation, but even then, uh, Chrysler Corporation is not an independent corporation. Um, it was at one point in the past, uh, and I'm not even talking about uh, past 10, 15 years. I'm talking about like 30, 40 years, maybe even longer. Um, it used to be independent. Um, it no longer is, um, you know, now, nowadays, uh, the, the corporations, the, you know, automotive conglomerate are actually quite large, um, General Motors, uh, Ford Motor Company, uh, they are not just, you know, massive conglomerates here in the United States, but they are massive conglomerates worldwide. Uh, for that matter, um, along with Chrysler, that's actually not Chrysler it's called Chrysler. It's actually a Fiat Chrysler Corporation, and even then, they actually have a parent company because they actually, as of 2019, 20, 2019 to twenty twenty one, uh, they were actually purchased um, after you know, pretty much. Uh, heading in a nosedive in terms of you know company value they were nosediving hard and uh a uh european conglomerate named stellantis uh actually came into the picture and saved them from bankruptcy um so they are not independent they're actually owned by another conglomerate uh european conglomerate um but yes, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned before, uh, pretense, Chrysler doesn't actually exist. Um, the only other uh, possible car brand or car company that could exist is the um, more smaller, micro, compact, uh, three-wheel cars of Fallout 4. Uh, which are, you know, one of them is uh, fully named um, called Fusion Flea Supreme. Uh, I, I'm i taking a very huge guess here. Um, you know, I take this with a grain of salt. It's not confirmed by Bethesda as far as I understand and as far as I know. Um, but I could very much be wrong and it could have been confirmed. Uh, I have... As of the time of this recording, I haven't double-checked that. Um, but uh, Fusion Flea was the other one that I was alluding to. Um, but 
before I really get into what happened to our real world uh, car conglomerates, um, let me give y'all a quick, very, very brief rundown of how all of these car companies that we know about today uh, actually even got started because it's it's quite a bit intricate, a uh, bit confusing, but I've I've managed to dig out all the information as best as I could, and uh, and and I hope I can present it well enough. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so without further ado, uh, let me just jump right in um i will be as i said uh establishing the car brands that the major car brands that have existed and that some of them still exist to this day um if you really do want to get far more detailed information please i uh encourage highly encourage you to go check it out um try not to get lost in the information because there is a lot out there um, and some of it can be contradicting, but, um, anyways, getting started, um, Oldsmobile, uh, Oldsmobile started in 1897, believe it or not. Uh, it used to be one of America's oldest car brands, uh, up until sadly 2004 when General Motors, uh, had to unfortunately cut it off and, you know let it fade into the ether um after that um in 1902 uh henry ford of uh ford motor company had actually established two car brands uh prior to that uh this is one of them and he called it henry ford uh henry ford motor Com uh, car company if i'm not mistaken actually um that was actually renamed in the year i just mentioned to cadillac uh, the Cadillac Motor Company, uh, 1902, the year there. Uh, following year, 1903, uh, Ford, Henry Ford uh, Sr., managed to establish um, the Ford Motor Company that we now know, you know, today and that still remains. Um, in that same year, uh, Buick um, was a couple of... Uh, branched uh, companies that decided to finally um, you know kind of come together and become a Buick Motor Company um, in 1905 uh, General Motors was established as a, a shareholder um, for a specific gentleman running uh, Buick or, you know, co-running Buick or something along the lines of that. Uh, like I said, the information is, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be quite confusing. So please bear with me. Um, in 1907, uh, the Oakland Motor Company was established. Um, I'll explain in a sec why, uh, I'll explain in a bit why that is important. Um, but just know that, you know, Oakland Motor Company was, was established. Um, in 1908, uh, General Motors um, kind of stops being just a, a you know, as we might uh, much more easily understand, a ghost company and actually became a genuine, actual motor company, um, which came to have, uh, you know, obviously... Buick, Cadillac, a uh, couple of other early mm, startup companies um, for the time um, that 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 happened in 1908. Um, in 1910, um, this is where the, the uh, this is where the 1905-1908 come into play. Uh, 1910. Um, a gentleman named William Durant uh, was unfortunately ousted from the presidential position at General Motors. Um, he was uh, the one who established it in uh, 
1905, and he is the one responsible for bringing together the different brands uh, in 1908. Uh, that was his his work. Um, and unfortunately, in 19, 1910, he lost his position there. Um, the following year, in 1911, um, Louis Chevrolet, a uh, former race driver for Buick, of all things, um, and a previous mentioned gentleman, uh, William Durant, actually established Chevrolet Motor Company. Um, in uh 1913 after a lot of stuff that once again it's it's a lot of information out there i highly do suggest you uh hop on the internet and look it up it's quite interesting or it can be a quite interesting read uh in 1913 dodge brothers uh horse and john establish the dodge brothers uh, or the dodge ram that we know today um uh, also, in 1917, uh, the Lincoln Motor Company was established. Uh, I cannot say uh, if it was within uh, Ford Motor Company or not. Uh, I unfortunately did not have the time to uh, really go into that excruciating detail. Um, like I said, it's a lot of information out there. I really do highly suggest just to you know get out there and, and look it up. Um, but moving on. In 1925, uh, Chrysler, uh, yes, uh, Chrysler uh, was established under a different car brand named Maxwell Motor Company. Um, in 1926, uh, this is where the 1907 Oakland comes into play. Uh, in 1926, Oakland uh, Motor Company was renamed and, you know, uh, restructured into Pontiac. Uh, as I said before, it, it came to play. Uh, that is how Pontiac got started. Um, 1938, uh, Mercury Motors, or the Mercury, you know, brand was established um, by uh, Henry Ford uh the first uh first is son edsel uh he actually is the one responsible for mercury uh like i said that um unfortunately you know we know what happened with with uh mercury it got dropped unfortunately but you know that's how it goes in 1941 uh jeep is established uh by a company named willie's overland um that is a bit of a tangent here but um jeep has quite an interesting history uh, i was reading up on it and i very much encourage anyone to go read the history of jeep uh quite interesting uh you know not <laughs> um very very interesting uh, let me see, uh, in, uh, adding to my previous point, uh, 1953, uh, Willie's Overland, uh, who owned Jeep, actually was purchased by another car company named Kaiser, uh, and then they, in 1969, were purchased by yet another car brand, named American Motor Company. Uh, like I said, uh, Jeep has a quite an interesting uh, history there. Um, I highly encourage people to go check it out. Um, and, uh, you know, keeping that going on, in 1987, uh, Jeep and uh, assets of American Motor Company, AMC, uh, as it was also known, um, were purchased by Chrysler. Uh, as I said, it's it's very, very interesting. Um, coming out of some of this research, which 
I, I, I'm willing to admit was a bit surface level at times, um, is very, very interesting. Um, due to that fact, um, bringing it back to Fallout, these were big companies. These were, these are, these are big companies. I mean, you know, in today's world, these companies are massive, massive companies. Um, and to that end, I mean, I, I can't help but ask the question, what happened to them? Because by the 1950s, a lot of these car brands had well established themselves, um, you know, but, you know, but, um, as I said, you know, they 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 were some very very large companies, and yet, where are they in the Fallout universe? Uh, I mean, we have Chrysler, which once again is a bit of a nod to Chrysler, and definitely it is demonstrated in their vehicles. Their vehicles very much demonstrate and illustrate. Uh, inspiration from the vehicles of Chrysler uh, during that time period of the you know 1940s to the 1960s but uh, despite that we do not see or you know have them mention um, the actual you know brands of General Motors Ford Motor Company Chrysler um, you know it, it it's it's very very vague surprisingly and um and a very interesting discussion that i don't believe um we have any concrete answers to um although i am willing to admit uh i have played lots of fallout 76 and uh, I have been to many of the locations within that game. I haven't been everywhere. Um, there could be information within Fallout 76, you know, tucked away in some cabinet, in some, you know, hollow tape, um, in some note um, that I may have missed that could contain some very substantial uh, lore for you know, any of the car brands that I mentioned. Um, but I, as far as I have it known, uh, the car brands that exist today in our, in, in our real world, uh, do not exist in, in the Fallout universe and seem to have been scrubbed away quite, <laughs> quite cleanly, um, which is a very, very eyebrow raising topic because um you know uh just just going outside and and taking a look at the some of the vehicles that people are driving um you can see on occasion uh vehicles from car brands that no longer exist um Pontiac being one of those, uh, Pontiac, um, Buick, Oldsmobile, I mean, these brands were, you know, <laughs> got axed, uh, man, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Oldsmobile got axed in 2004, and, uh, you know, and to some of the places I've been, I've still witnessed people driving some of their vehicles, uh, you know, some, <laughs> some of their vehicles, uh, in varying states of disrepair, but still around nonetheless, um, even, you know, even cars from, uh, one of the other many brands that I mentioned, uh, American Motor Company, AMC, uh, you can still see some folks driving around in in some of those vehicles. Um, in the Jeep community, uh, older CJs are very much, you know, highly desirable. 
um, Jeep fans um, who know how to, you know, work on the older vehicles flock to any running driving example of an older Jeep for sale. They'll they'll scoop those kind of vehicles up. Um, so I find it very, very difficult and very, very improbable that, um, you know, the vehicles could just be suddenly wiped out, you know, and, and be almost entirely replaced by nothing but newer vehicles. Um, <clears throat> so it really just raises the question whatever happened to our real world you know car companies um as i said these are these you know corporations are massive and they were massive even back then you know in during the 1940s and 50s they were they were large companies um i am well aware that uh, Chrysler Corporation in particular uh, was on the edge of bankruptcy several times um, throughout the 50s, 50s, 60s, uh, 70s, 80s, and then ultimately did end up at bankruptcy in the economic crash of 2000 and 2008. Uh, I am well aware that, that both General Motors and uh, Chrysler Corporation, uh, Chrys uh, Fiat Chrysler, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was Fiat Chrysler at the time. Um, they did, you know, face bankruptcy. However, um, that, you know, that would that would mean that the Fallout universe. Um, follows our exact timeline with minor differences um, but follows our real world timeline up until say the you know early 2020s which would probably be around right now around the time you know this recording takes place you know would be the true divergence um, which is not what is known to be um, it's it's a very interesting topic i i have so many theories about it um but you know for the time being i'd really like to just lay down some facts about it hey everyone fast rod from the future here so everything i mentioned right now uh in the first about 23 minutes of this video um was actually recorded a couple of days ago and I uh, I seem to have uh, really just uh, just had to do research on the topic and had to uh, verify uh, about the Chrysler uh, Corporation and the Corvega brand and uh, unfortunately much to my dismay I have found so far nothing. Um, it could be that Fallout 76 has uh, some kind of lore, some kind of you know piece of information. Uh, I just do not know about it, or I simply have not found it uh, in the you know years that I've been playing Fallout 76. I did check Fallout 3 uh, due to the fact that we find the Chrysler building in that game and the Corvega plant and I have uh, played through and explored the Corvega assembly plant in Boston in the Commonwealth in Fallout 4 and to my knowledge the most lore we ever get is from a red rocket terminal at the beginning of Fallout 4 and due to that um, I I have crafted some personal theories that have only really been uh, expanded and more mm, have been really uh, gotten details uh, through my research and through my attempted research uh, at Chrysler's. So with that, um, 
first off, I'm going to rehash some information I already gave you, uh, like I said at the beginning of this this video. Um, I will try to keep it as summed up as possible. Uh, please bear with me. Um, in the mid-1950s, uh, Chrysler was uh, in financial trouble. And uh, that is when uh, Virgil Exner introduced the now-known forward styling of the Chrysler vehicles uh, as of 19, uh, really 1957 uh, into the early 60s. Um, Ford in 1958 introduced a new brand named Edsel uh, and actually ended up uh, killing it off in 1960 and a half uh, due to uh, problematic sales as well as uh, actually cannibalizing its own sales in uh, other brands under the Ford Motor Company. Um, thus leading into 1980, General Motors and Chrysler yet again uh, found themselves in financial trouble, um, Chrysler more than General Motors. Uh, General Motors uh, elected a new uh, company president in Roger Smith and he made some changes uh, both uh, at the head office as well as in manufacturing and thus was able to pull General Motors out. Meanwhile, the following year, um, actually within the same year, uh, 1981 I am referring to, uh, both General Motors elected a new president and Chrysler actually ended up having to borrow $1.5 billion from the U.S. government uh, in order to save itself, uh, which it did, and actually ended up paying that money back with interest uh, within the decade. Um, all this culminating in 2008 when Chrysler and General Motors definitively declared themselves in bankruptcy. Uh, both uh, large corporations uh, ended up needing to get a uh, yet an another loan from the U.S. government uh, for a second time for Chrysler, but a first time for General Motors, um, uh, worth billions. And uh, Chrysler, if I'm not mistaken, did manage to pay it back in the following decade. Uh, however, uh, General Motors has yet to pay that back. Uh, Chrysler, unfortunately, did not uh, see itself out of financial struggles. And in uh, between uh, 2019 and 2021, uh, it was purchased by a European conglomerate named Stellantis. And you know is still around today now for the next part what I'm going to say is not canon uh, it is my own personal theories um, I'm going to first off explain why I have these theories and uh, we're going to start off with the firearms industry uh, the firearms industry in the Fallout universe and in our universe seem to have developed in a similar pattern um, with the 1911 uh, still being present in Fallout 1, uh, I believe Fallout 2, um, and that just being due to the fact that the 1911 had such a long service life uh, that went well into the 80s. Um, until it was finally replaced by the Beretta. Um, the uh, Desert Eagle also being present in those early games. Um, the Desert Eagle being a firearm that was actually, once again, developed in the 1980s uh, alongside company Glock. Uh, Glock actually is a product of the 1970s uh, in our real world as well as the 
service rifle, assault rifle, and the uh, marksman's carbine. All three of them being variants of the uh, infamous uh, M16 uh, U.S. standard issue military rifle. Um, alongside with the attachments on the marksman's carbine being products that weren't available to the public or much less available at all until the late 1990s and early uh, 2000s or actually up to the range of 2010 to be exact uh, 2010 all the way back to the late 1990s uh, 1995 um, would be a good guess there that is the time period where those attachments are even possible much less available um, as well as the anti-material rifle from Fallout New Vegas that is actually a product of the 1990s um, so clearly firearms technology uh, must have developed in a similar pattern to our own I personally believe that vehicles also developed into um, a similar pattern as the vehicles in our real world um, one of those uh, kind of examples that backs me up being the Corvega commercial in the original fallout uh, that commercial explicitly states that the vehicle had no electronics no computers and was an all analog system uh, the reason being that our real world vehicles are actually not analog but rather digital um, the difference between digital and analog is that uh, digital signals on electronics is genuinely an on or off switch uh, current is either on or off uh, versus an analog system an analog system is almost off and always on um, it is an electrical system that reaches almost zero but never definitive um, that is the major differences on those systems and because of that, I personally believe that the Fallout Corvega commercial wouldn't need to mention that the vehicle is all analog if cars before it weren't digital and use digital electronics and digital computers, which is what our real world cars, as I said, do use. Um, with that said, I have crafted a second theory that the auto industry developed similar yet different from our own. And um, I will go into detail about that. And we're going to start it off once again with Chrysler. Chrysler being uh, in the mid-1950s in financial trouble. However, it managed to recuperate by introducing the forward styling of Virginal Exner um, and thus, you know, saving itself. Uh, Ford still establishing the Edsel brand in 1958. However, where things begin to differ is that instead of killing off the brand in 1960 and a half, Ford decides to continue the brand and push it into the 60s, thus losing millions and actually switching places with Chrysler later on. Uh, and by later on, I mean in 1980, instead of being General Motors and Chrysler in financial trouble, it's actually General Motors and Ford in financial trouble, thus leading to the following year, uh, General Motors still uh, appoints its new president in Roger Smith. However, Ford is actually the one to get the $1.5 billion loan from the U.S. government instead of Chrysler. While Chrysler manages to um, 
lived through the 1970s and the OPEC era and manages to, you know, exit it rather unscathed. Um, all culminating in 2008, where in our timeline, General Motors and Chrysler declared bankruptcy in the Fallout universe, Ford and General Motors actually declare bankruptcy. However, unlike our universe where the U.S. government stepped in and saved both uh, car manufacturers, the government in the Fallout universe decides to adopt um, the scientific notion of survival of the fittest and decides to let both Ford and General Motors uh, perish in the financial crisis of 2008. Thus, Chrysler continues on uh, much weaker than it had been in several decades, but continues, leading it to the time period once again reflective of our universe of 2019 to 2021 when Chrysler is bought by the conglomerate Stellantis. Um, however, in that, in the Fallout universe, Chrysler is renamed to Chrysler. And a supporting piece of information that I've learned is that in Fallout 2, Chrysler is spelled differently. Um, from Fallout 1 and from all the other Fallout games uh, that at least mention Chrysler. Um, the traditional spelling of Chrysler is uh, C-H-R-Y-S-L-U-S versus Fallout 2's mention of it is C-H-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S. -S. Um, perhaps something that uh, Stellantis placed in uh, in the name uh, as an homage to itself. Uh, in 2021 to 2077, um, the very vague amount of information that exists for the brand takes place uh, in that perhaps Stellantis, uh, due to corporate collapse or political tension, uh, either sells off priceless to a American firm or simply uh, cuts it off and allows it to be independent. Um, the first nuclear vehicle is created by the company. Uh, I have read in the very unreliable source of the Fallout Wiki that that happened in the late 2060s and early uh, 2070s, uh, that is, as I said, it comes from the wiki, so it's a bit unreliable. Um, and obviously, with the new, uh, with the company growing and flourishing yet again, um, trying to pay an homage to its history as Chrysler, it decides to reintroduce and continue Virgil Eckner, Eckner's vision of uh, forward styling and actually decides to dig out prototypes of the 1960s and 50s and actually decides to incorporate them into the vehicles that they produce uh, at that time. Um, with all that said, uh, this was a lot of research. Um, that is my personal theory, uh, by the way. Um, this was a lot of research. Uh, I spent several days uh, just trying to find any scrap of information on Chrysler. Uh, I was unfortunately unsuccessful in finding anything of su substantial importance. Um, mostly what we get in the games is just... Um, exposition and just you know background background uh, displays and whatnot um, it was 
uh, it was a little stressful, um, but um, with all that said, uh, thank you for uh, watching, for hearing me ramble on, uh, perhaps a bit too long about this, um, and I hope to see everyone in the next video.